Love runs high in the time. All right, it's that time again, everybody. So we're back in the kitchen. So I'm going to show you guys a very quick recipe. Um, very quick, we're going to try and keep this to a very short video. What we're doing, we're going to do ribeyes and avocado, okay? Very basic, high fat, um, good anti-inflammatory to the body, uh, high protein, and low carbohydrate. So this will keep you burning body fat. So um, the steaks that I've selected are ribeyes, that's my favorite piece of meat. And uh, you know, if you guys are doing more carbohydrates, you're doing lower fat, then maybe go with like a sirloin or a filet mignon, something that's got a little less marbling in it. Uh, but I like the texture, man. I, I, I like it to be fatty. Uh, so anyway, all the ingredients that you guys are going to need, we're going to need, uh, I got avocado here. We're going to have your, your meat selection here. We have a big baking sheet laid out, and then we have a piece of tin foil laid over the top of it, okay? The tin foil is basically just going to save some cleanup, all right? I'm a basic guy. I don't like to sit around and clean up all day long. Um, I like to eat. I don't like to clean. So we're going to do the tin foil over the baking sheet. Then we have a rack on top. We have this rack here. That way some airflow can get underneath the steak. Uh, and, and what we're going to do to this steak is a reverse sear method. If you've never heard of a reverse sear method, uh, traditionally people will do the, the sear method. So what they do is you get a cast iron pan out, you turn it up to high heat, and you, you can sear the steak, right? And then they will put it in the oven until the, the middle of it gets to the temperature that they desire. The, the problem with that is that when you do it that way, when you sear the top, the meat starts to cook. So what you get is you get inconsistencies, right? You get um, a charred outside, and then you get kind of like well done, medium well, rare, and then, you know, so on and so forth, and it goes through. So it's like this layering effect, kind of like an onion. Uh, well, we don't want that. A delicious steak, if you go to a high-end steakhouse anywhere, is going to have a nice consistent uh, internal temperature cooked to what, whatever the patron wants. And, uh, and then, you know, you have that nice like Chicago style with like the chard on top. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it in the oven. We've preheated our oven to 275. We've preheated our oven to 275. We have all this laid out. Our steak is seasoned. We're going to pop it in. And we're just going to periodically check it with a meat thermometer. Okay, which is a crucial tool for this, and we're going to get it to the desired temperature that we want. I like my steaks at uh, like 125. Uh, that's rare, and uh, it, it depends like what you want. So I'll read off all the different temperatures real quick and uh, see what resonates with you. So uh, blue, which is pretty much raw, uh, still mooing, essentially, is going to be uh, 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what you're looking for if you want blue, okay, in the center of this. When you poke this thing down, your meat thermometer here, you're going to poke it down into the steak, and it'll let you know. Like right now, this is 63 degrees. So this is kind of, uh, I just got it done thawing all day and all that. And then uh, what I like is going to be rare, which is mostly red in the middle. That's going to be 125 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Medium rare is going to be mostly pink with the red center. That's 130 to 140. Medium is going to be pink throughout. That's going to be 140 to 150. Medium well, you're looking at a lot of browning and then some pink. That's 150 to 155. And then last but definitely not least is something I don't recommend, which is basically a bootstrap. That's going to be well done at uh, 160 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I do not recommend eating a steak that's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That is going to be dry, dry, dry. Um, so anyway, so go ahead and check this out, you guys. This is kind of what we're looking at. Okay. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of the deal right there, man. So that's going to be your uh, your different cooking ranges. So we have this all seasoned up. Um, use your own seasonings. Play with them. You know, you want to switch it up. If you want to stay on your diet for a long period of time, you're going to need to have different seasonings and rely on them at different times. Sometimes I like to put these in a bag and marinate them uh, with like teriyaki sauce or barbecue sauce. Um, I'm trying to go basic today. So what I got here is I got onion powder, I got uh, pink salt, Himalayan pink salt, and then I got pepper, okay, black pepper. So most people, uh, you want a very basic steak, just do salt and pepper. Now we have pink salt here. Why do we have pink salt? We have pink salt because pink salt is going to have um, more than 80 
vitamins and minerals in it, okay? We store our minerals in our bones, all right? Very, very important for bone mineral density. Um, you can't stress that enough, so you should be trying to find things like pink salt or uh, Celtic sea salt. Those have lots of those micronutrients that we're looking for in our diet. Um, if you just get that regular like white table salt, all that is is extracted sodium. There's none of the other stuff. It's one nutrient. It's just sodium. This is sodium plus zinc, magnesium. You know, you have all the all the other stuff. Uh, iron is what makes this pink. So this is a winner right here. So you put this on your steak. Uh, now you got some extra nutrition from this guy, okay? And don't be afraid of salt. Salt is very crucial for muscle contractions, okay? When you flex your bicep and you feel it contract and get tight, it's because of sodium. Sodium is helping that whole process, okay? Um, anybody who's ever dieted down for a photo shoot or a bodybuilding contest or anything like that will know that when you deplete sodium and, uh, and carbohydrates, you can't get a pump to save your life. You can't even feel the muscle working. Um, you know, slamming some pickle juice before a workout, will you'll get an insane pump and your muscles will feel like they want to cramp up and it's because that's sodium okay so it's, it's crucial so um, moderation don't don't go overkill with it but I mean if you're in good health and all that uh, you can salt it up so then I got black pepper so anyway I've, I've got these guys all seasoned up and, uh, and we're gonna pop it in the oven okay um, and then let's uh, let's go over a little bit of uh, the nutrition with red meat. So why is why is red meat uh, healthy, right? So what are some benefits of it? Well, the first thing and probably the most common is going to be that it has B12. Okay, B12 is really really good for your red blood cell count, uh, which it, it, your red blood cells carry oxygen to the body, so that's really good. Um, red meat also has zinc. Okay, zinc is is crucial for you. Um, B12 also helps create DNA in the body. So that is absolutely essential and, uh, and, and red meat's full of it. Red meat is also really high in iron. And especially to the ladies out there, iron is usually something that, that most women are falling short on. So it's, it's really important to have some red meat a couple times a week, um, you know, and that, and that can help get, boost your iron levels up. Other sources of iron, on a little side note, are gonna be like pumpkin seeds, and uh, and uh, and uh, spinach, uh, you gotta eat a lot of it though. But you know those those are a couple other ones. Um, so anyway, red meat's good. Another thing that it contains is saturated fat. Now this is what everybody worries about because it contains saturated fat. But saturated fat will help boost testosterone. If you're boosting testosterone, you will get stronger in the gym. Okay, so it's good to have a moderate amount of saturated fat in the diet. Okay, and cholesterol. Um, all the old school bodybuilders and strongmen of like way back in the day in the 70s and all that, like Arnold's day, they knew the power of, of the fats, okay? You do not want to go too low on your fats. Um, you don't want to cut them out. They're not evil, okay? They should be favored in your diet, having fats. Um, and saturated fat is a very, very good fat. So, um, the, you know, like that's why I like the ribeye. It contains a lot of that. And then I combine it with the, the really powerful effects of an avocado together. And it's a lot of fat, uh, but it's, it's, when you mix them together, it's uh, very anti-inflammatory. Okay, now remember, inflammation can cause disease and cancer and uh, make it hard for you to just lose body fat in general and stay lean and have that physique that you want. So it's good to try and do things that minimize inflammation. You want acute inflammation after your workouts, that's what makes the adaptation, the muscle grow, but you, uh, you don't want chronic inflammation all the time, okay? And a lot of times when I get a client, that's kind of like the first thing that uh, the, the, the first like 10 pounds is usually just inflammation of water because we get them eating healthy. So don't be surprised, you know, when you, when you partake in a new diet, if you start flushing, uh, you know, a ton of weight the first week because you get on some type of a, a healthier diet, maybe like a low carb diet or something like that, you're going to flush a lot of water and a lot of inflammation out. So um, here this for 10 minutes now, about 15 minutes actually. And uh, so it's starting to dry out a little bit. So you can kind of touch it and dampen it. Um, you want it to be a little bit dry, and because uh, that, like I said, that helps the uh, the searing process. So around the edges, it's starting to dry out a little bit, which is great. Um, I didn't know, but in in, uh, in like really high end steakhouses, they um, we went to dinner for like our 40th anniversary, and they were explaining that they have these salt rooms, and they actually let these steaks like when they age them for like whatever, like 30 days or whatever, 
they actually start molding off the top and they cut that off and uh, and that's how you get all that flavor. It's kind of weird, kind of disgusting, but um, so now what we're doing, we have a cast iron pan out, okay? It's cast iron so it can handle really high heat. Um, I'm using a little bit of coconut oil in the bottom of it, a uh, good high fat oil to cook with. You can also use avocado oil, that's another high heat. Um, don't use olive oil, okay? When that starts to get, get to its smoking point, it becomes a carcinogen. So you don't want that in your system. So um, keep it to coconut oil and, uh, and avocado oil, okay? Those are good oils for you. So anyway, that at full blast, okay? Full blast. So make sure you get your fan prepared, okay? Because this thing is going to smoke. But all you got to do is like a minute on each side, okay? It's kind of like a flash sear, flash bang, boom. What's your name? So uh, that is it. That is the reverse sear method on ribeye steak. Okay. So again, just to touch up, things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a baking sheet. You're gonna need a tray to put your steaks on. You want to uh, preheat the oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, and then I did my steak for about 40 minutes. That was perfect. Everything was about 125, which is a rare steak. Um, I went over the the uh, all, all the different uh, temperatures a little bit ago. So you cook your steak until you uh, until you like the, the internal temperature of it. Pull it out for 10 to 15 minutes. Let the top of it dry out. That makes the quick sear a little bit better. Okay. You just get that nice char on top, and then you have um, you know your nice consistent flavor all the way through that steak. And then uh, I'm serving up with a side of avocado. You could do any any other side though. I mean, you could do uh, veggie or or what have you. So. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy and uh, You know they say uh, the golden rule is never trust a skinny chef But I don't know man after you have this you might uh, you might change your mind, so they might think that's bullshit Anyway, thank you and uh, until next time